Hey everyone, you know by most accounts, the 1800s were the golden era of sailing, considered to be part of the age of sail. It was during this time period that some of the most complex boats to ever travel the seas were created. And it was also during this period that a rise of institutions such as the German Imperial Navy and British Royal Navy caused a surge in shipbuilding. And it was because of this reality that some massive ships were created. And be it big barges or robust ironclads, some ships were built to be huge. So let's begin. Here are the top 15 largest ships from the 1800s. Number 15, the HMS Black Prince. For a brief period, the HMS Black Prince was outshone only by her sister ship, the HMS Warrior, in terms of class. After all, not only was she the world's second iron-hulled armored warship, but she was also extremely fierce. She came in at a massive 128 meters in length and 18 meters in width, and for nearly a time was nearly impregnable to naval guns. Yet, as incredible as she was at the time of her creation in 1861, rapid advances in naval technology soon made her obsolete. And as a result, she spent more time in reserve and training roles than in first-line service. However, in 1923, she was ultimately sold for scrap, putting an end to her long but relatively uneventful career. Number 14. Potosi By the late 1800s, most of the largest ships being built were for passenger travel or for battle. But in 1895, a super-large trading vessel was built that went against that norm. Known as the Potosi, it came in at an impressive 133 meters in length and 15 meters in width, and its primary purpose was collecting guano in Chile for use by chemical companies in Germany. It was built in order to withstand the rough weather often encountered at the southern end of South America, and it successfully applied its trade for about 30 years. However, a fire on board in 1925 as it carried a cargo of 800 tons of coal and 5,000 tons of patent fuel made the ship a serious hazard, and as a result, the decision was made to beach it and blow it to bits with artillery. Number 13. The Solano when it comes to ferries, the largest to ever set sail was the Solano, holding this record for 35 years between 1879 and 1914. She came in at a length of 130 meters and a width of 35 meters, and used two massive 2,000 horsepower engines in order to ply its trade across the Carquinez Strait between Benicia and Port Costa in California. Now, the cool thing about this ship is that it was almost like an aquatic railroad, as it would have had trains roll onto it, transport them across the strait, and then have them roll onto a different railroad track on the other side. Doing so daily from 1879 until 1930, it had four tracks that could hold either an entire 24-car passenger train plus locomotive, or a 48-car freight train and locomotive. However, while this was an impressive feat, the ship was replaced by a railroad bridge across the strait on October 15th of 1930, and almost immediately afterwards, the Solano was decommissioned and scrapped. Number 12. SS City of New York as far as passenger ships go, few were quite as luxurious as the SS City of New York. Completed in 1888, she was designed to be the largest and fastest liner on the Atlantic, and by all accounts, she was a smashing success. Coming in at 170 meters in length, she was the longest boat in the world for a period of about five years. And while she didn't achieve the Westbound Blue Ribbon Award for the fastest speed between Europe and America, she did hold the eastbound record from August of 1892 until May of 1893, due to her ability to travel at speed of 20 knots. She would go on to have an illustrious career as she not only served as an auxiliary vessel in both the Spanish-American War and World War I, but also has the distinction of being the ship to nearly collide with the Titanic during the Titanic's first and only voyage. However, after decades of service, she was ultimately broken apart for scrap in 1923. Number 11, the USS Pennsylvania. During the 1800s, the United States really came into its own as a strong and independent nation, and part of this development included the procurement of warships in order to protect its coasts and enforce its will abroad. And while the United States ended up amassing a very sizable military, the largest United States sailing warship ever built was the USS Pennsylvania. Coming in at a respectable 65 meters in length and 17 meters in width, she was a three-decked ship that sported 130 guns, putting her neck to neck with some of the best ships in the British Royal Navy. She was completed in 1837 and ended up having a pretty uneventful career after undertaking her only sea voyage from Delaware Bay to Chesapeake Bay. She ended up sitting at dock at the Norfolk Naval Yard in Portsmouth, Virginia until 1861. That's because it was in this year that the Civil War started, and it was upon this announcement that her crew quickly burned her down in order to make sure she didn't make it into Confederate hands. 
Number 10. Russian Monitor Novgorod Throughout the late 19th century, European powers began to develop ironclad battleships in order to replace their now obsolete wooden battleships. During this push, some countries decided to test out new features and styles, and while it was the Brits and Germans who pumped out the most boats, the Russians tried to gain an advantage with their Russian Monitor Novgorod. Completed in 1874, it was more or less built in the shape of a frisbee, but the reason for this being because this shape allowed the ship to be very wide for its size. This in turn would increase its buoyancy, with the theoretical implication being that the ship could load far more weapons aboard than its similarly sized competitors, and therefore bring more firepower into battle. Now, on one hand, this certainly was the case. After all, its armament of two 11-inch rifle muzzle-loading guns was pretty serious given the ship's size. However, the Novgorod's perfectly round shape meant that it was inefficient at sea, as its top speed was a pretty pathetic 6.5 knots, while its slow turning radius meant that it was unable to engage moving targets for long periods of time. As a result, the ship was relegated to the Coast Guard, where it served in this capacity acceptably well until its retirement in 1903. Number 9. HMS Warrior Of all the boats in the British Royal Navy for a time, the HMS Warrior was a pride of the fleet. Powered by both steam and sail, she was by many accounts the largest, fastest, and most powerful warship of her day, as at 128 meters in length and 18 meters in width, plus 9,300 tons in weight, she was a true behemoth. When put in tandem with her 40 guns, she was a step above all other ships, even overtaking France's La Gloire, which was the world's first ironclad ship and the main ship that the HMS Warrior was intended to compete against. In fact, the HMS Warrior was so strong that very few experts believed that France could effectively counter it, and as a result, it served as a deterrent for war in an era where rivalries ran high between Europe's great powers. Thankfully, it was perhaps this deterrence that helped prevent any major British sea conflicts during its time in active service, spending the period between 1860 and 1872 in the seagoing Channel Fleet. However, after this period of time, the HMS Warrior was outshone by other ironclads, and in 1872, she was relegated to the position in the Coast Guard, and ultimately decommissioned in 1900. Nowadays, she sits in Portsmouth Harbor as a museum ship, and can be visited 362 days of the year. Number 8. The Affondatore In the 1860s, Italy was a nation that was in the very early stages of becoming a unified country, yet that didn't stop the fledgling new state from purchasing the Affondatore. Made in England and shipped to Italy in 1865, her name in English translates to Sinker, and this was because unlike any other ships on this list, she was initially designed to rely on her ram as her only weapon, with the idea being that she would simply collide into other ships and destroy them. Given her length of 90 meters, width of 12 meters, weight of about 4,000 tons, and massive 2.5 meter long ram, this seemed plausible, although during construction she was also outfitted with two 135 kilogram guns for a bit of extra protection. Yet while this heavyweight should have been able to get the job done, the Italian Navy quickly realized that its ram was all but useless, as during the Austro-Prussian War, her attempt to ram Austrian boats in the 1866 Battle of Lisa led to her taking on more damage than she could withstand. This ultimately led to her sinking in a storm in Acona later that year, likely due to the damage she sustained. And while she was refloated and re-outfitted for use in the Navy, she never saw battle again, and ultimately vanished from the naval record in 1907. Number 7. RMS Oceanic While the RMS Titanic is the most famous ship to be made by the White Star Line, the RMS Oceanic was its far more successful older brother. Launched in 1899, it was both the largest and last new passenger ship to set sail in the 19th century, and it came in at 215 meters in length, 21 meters in width, and had a capacity to hold up to 1,700 passengers and about 350 crew members on board. Considered to be a luxury liner rather than a speedy one, it was filled with first, second, and third class cabins that were some of the best around during their day. Now, the RMS Oceanic spent most of its service life traveling between Europe and New York, and in 1914 a decision was made to convert the RMS Oceanic from a passenger liner to an armed merchant cruiser that could assist in the war effort. However, very early in the war, the ship was very poorly navigated in an extremely dangerous set of islands that are known as the Shulls of Fula, and as a result it ran aground in perfectly good weather and calm water causing it to be completely destroyed, and received the not-so-great honor of being the first Allied passenger ship to be lost in the war. As such, the RMS Oceanic had a great career, but a horrible retirement. Number 6. The HMS Victory 
While not built in the 1800s, the HMS Victory is a ship that saw a lot of action during the first part of that century. Launched all the way back in 1765, she was the pride of the British Navy, coming in at 69 meters in length, 16 meters in width, and sporting three deck guns, with a total of 104 guns on board. As the flagship of Britain's Channel and Mediterranean fleets during the American Revolution and French Revolutionary Wars, the HMS Victory saw a lot of action, yet it was in 1805 that she reached her absolute peak. That's because under Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson, the HMS Victory played a large part in the victory of the British fleet at the Battle of Trafalgar, and after the battle continued to be used to blockade France. However, by the 1830s, the ship had been unmasted and moored at the city of Portsmouth, and it remained here as a stationary flagship of the Naval Command until 1922. That's because it was in this year that the decision was made to restore her to the same condition she was in under Nelson, and today the HMS Victory is now a museum ship. However, despite this museum status, she's still in the service of the British Navy, and as of 2022 is the world's oldest naval ship still in commission, with 244 years of service under her belt. Number 5. SS Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse By the late 1800s, Germany was a fully unified and industrial power on the way to economic glory, and it was part of this development that the country started to compete with Britain in the realm of shipbuilding. And while Britain remained the owner of the world's largest ships, Germany squeaked in a short-term size victory with the SS Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse. Named after the deceased Kaiser Wilhelm I from 1897 until 1899, she was considered to be the world's largest passenger ship. Coming in at 200 meters in length and 20 meters in width, she was absolutely massive, yet her true value lay in her technological features. After all, she was the first ship to feature four smokestacks, allowing her to produce a lot more horsepower and be very safe while at sea. And due to her impressive speed of 22 and a half knots, she took the Blue Ribbon Prize from the British for facilitating the fastest trip from Europe to America. However, while her days as a passenger ship were glorious, she quickly became obsolete due to rapid technological advances. And in 1914, the decision was made to refit her into an armed auxiliary cruiser in order to support Germany in World War I. However, just three weeks after the outbreak of the war, she was defeated in battle by the British ship the HMS High Flyer, ultimately leading to her being purposely sunk by her own crew off the coast of North Africa. Number 4. Santissima Trinidad While the Santissima Trinidad was built in the 1700s, her insane armament and use in the early 1800s earns her a spot on this list. See, while Spain was beginning to decline in power by the mid-18th century, the country was still a respectable world power, and it was with its colonial revenues that it was completed in 1769. Having a grand total of 112 guns when first built, and 140 after a retrofit in 1802, no ship would even come close until the advent of steamships in the mid-1800s, and by all accounts, she was an absolute behemoth. While relatively small but a respectable 61 meters in length and 16 meters in width, the ship stood apart in large part due to its density, as it was one of the only warships in world history to be built with four deck guns. Unsurprisingly, all of this extra weight also made it the heaviest armed ship in the world when it was built, and it wasn't long until Spain was putting it to good use. After all, in 1779, Spain declared war against Great Britain in support of the American Revolution, causing the Santissima Trinidad to see a lot of action as the flagship of the Spanish fleet. And upon declaration of the Anglo-Spanish War from 1796 until 1808, she saw action in multiple battles. However, in 1805, she was captured by the British in the Battle of Trafalgar, and upon receiving her, the British scuttled her and put an end to her illustrious career. Number 3. The HMS Victoria during the colonial period, Great Britain ruled the seas, as the British Royal Navy boasted hundreds of ships that sailed the world and extended Britain's empire globally. However, of all the old wooden ships to set sail, the largest was the HMS Victoria. Now, the reason for the HMS Victoria's creation can be traced back to the Crimean War. After all, Crimea was pretty far from the UK, and the fact that Britain had a few steamships that could quickly set sail to different parts of the world during the conflict convinced the Brits that the creation of large, powerful, and fast steamships were necessary in order to extend their power globally. As such, while the British Navy ended up retrofitting many wooden ships with steam engines, the HMS Victoria was one of the first ships to be made that was designed to be a steamship from the start. Launched in 1859, it weighed in at about 6,500 tons and was about 80 meters long, making it the largest wooden battleship in human history. 
In order to stave off enemies, it had a total of 121 guns on board and had to be staffed by about a thousand sailors at all times in order to function. Despite its massive size, it was able to reach the then impressive speed of almost 12 knots and by most accounts could accurately hit targets from about a kilometer away with extremely destructive shells that could penetrate wood planking and then burst. However, despite its awesome firepower, it was made during a time of relative peace and stability for the British Empire, and it didn't take long for ironclad ships that could far outcompete it to be built. As such, despite it sticking around until 1893, it never saw battle, and it was ultimately decommissioned and scrapped. Number 2. Mississippi Steamboats while the Mississippi River used to be home to many types of small wooden boats, by the 1830s, massive Mississippi steamboats dominated the waterway. For reference, the Mississippi River was perhaps the most significant American shipping route before the 20th century, as it was through this waterway that people and goods were transported between America's various states. While flatboats and keel boats were the original vessels used for this task, starting in the 1810s, steamboats began to be tested as a concept on the river, and by the 1830s, over 1,200 of these vessels were active on the waterway. In terms of structure, the steamboats were generally made out of wood, would often measure in at as much as 90 meters in length, and were powered by large steam engines that would heat coal, which in turn would then produce steam and power a large cylinder that pushed the boat forward. Over time, the design of these boats and the skills of the boatsmen became so good that it would take just four days to navigate the entirety of the river, cutting weeks off the original time that it took, while also providing far more cargo space for whatever had to be transported. However, despite the size and superiority of these boats, they were rather dangerous, as boiler explosions that could quickly sink an entire ship were not uncommon. And while regulations to bolster their safety were passed, they eventually began to decline in use in the late 1800s. This is because at that point in time, railroads began to give steamboats some serious competition due to their superior speeds, and by the mid-1900s, the usage of Mississippi steamboats had gone down considerably. Despite this, steamboats can still be seen on the river today, and they're now considered to be a beautiful piece of nostalgia and Americana. Number 1. The SS Great Eastern when it comes to size, the SS Great Eastern was ahead of its time. With a width of 25 meters and a length of 211 meters and weight of 32,000 tons, at the time of its construction in 1858, it was the largest ship in the world by a long shot, and it held this record for an impressive 30 years. Now at the time, few ships could handle more than a transatlantic voyage, so when mega-rich industrialist Ismabard Kingdom Brunel proposed a monstrous ship that was six times larger than anything else at sea in order to complete the task, it was seen as a long shot. However, after extensive plans and innovations such as the creation of a double hull, the ship was completed. And it turned heads because it was able to not only transport as many as 4,000 passengers from London to Australia on any one trip, but it could do so without refueling, helping to speed up the voyage between those two countries. Given that it was a steamship, it also had a set of absolutely massive paddle wheels, a total of five smokestacks, and the ability to generate up to 8,000 horsepower, making it a true behemoth in the shipping world. However, the SS Great Eastern didn't face a consistent stream of smooth sailing. After all, it had a massive incident on its maiden voyage, and due to lack of demand, it never ended up bringing passengers to Australia. Instead, it ferried passengers to the far closer and more popular destination city of New York. After doing so for quite a few years, she was converted into a cable-laying ship, and in 1866 became the first ship to lay a transatlantic telegraph cable. Once it became too obsolete to perform that role, she was brought to London and used for everything from a floating advertisement to a gymnasium. Yet after a very turbulent career, the SS Great Eastern was ultimately scrapped in 1889. I'll see you next time. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.